Hi everyone, welcome to Maths World UK. I'm James Grime and today I'm speaking with Becky Warren. Becky is a former maths teacher, a mathematical speaker and currently is a clinical data analyst, which is a very important job these days. But Becky's actually going to do something a little bit different with us today. We're going to be looking at some mathematical art. Becky's going to show us a mathematical design for you to explore at home. It's fairly simple stuff. All you need is pen and paper. It's kind of relaxing, but there's some mathematical ideas for you to explore law as well. But I started our conversation by asking Becky how she was coping in lockdown. Uh, okay, actually, yeah, I mean, I've been keeping myself busy, um, doing lots of things at home, which is, you know, the norm these days. And uh, one of the things that's been keeping me going has been like some mathematical art, which is, you know, yes, really I've noticed you've been doing mathematical art. Is this something that you've developed a new interest in during lockdown? Or was this something you always did? I've I've always been quite interested in it um, but you know like normal times I just never had enough time to do it there's always too many other things out of the house to do but there's been a really great opportunity to you know really focus on it spend some time on it and and it's yeah it's distracted me from all the other things which is great. And uh, I believe you're going to show us some of your art today is that right? Yeah absolutely yeah. I've got something in mind to share with you. So are you going to teach me how to do some mathematical art? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I was going to. All right. Okay. So what do I need? So to do this, I, I thought I would go for something quite simple to, uh, with a few items that we need today. So um, a pen and a piece of paper. And if you've got it, squared paper would be good. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at um, a kind of tessellation. Um, and it's one of my favourite ones. It's, uh, we use a shape. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you what we're going to use. So, um, we're going to use the um, L-shaped triomino. So here, um, it's just basically, you know, an L shape made up of, of three squares. So it just looks like that. So that's the shape we're going to tessellate. And I love it because it tessellates in so many different ways. Um, so what we could do is we could just, you know, slot two of these together um, and make a rectangle and um, tessellate that one quite easily. That'd be easy to tessellate the whole plane with and infinitely. Um, but actually it's really beautiful because it actually tessellates in other ways as well. So um, we're gonna look at some of the other ways today. So would you like to draw for me a uh, an L-shaped, we're gonna call them an L-shaped triomino because it's like a domino, but with three made of three squares, so a triomino. So that's your basic tile shape. So just draw me one of those first. Okay, I've done that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw one that's twice the size. So to draw my first um, L, it was a, you know one square, one square, one square, one square, and then two squares, two squares. So I'm going to draw one that's twice the size. So it goes two squares across, two, 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 and then back to the beginning, so four, four. So I've got this L that's twice as big. I'm going to copy you and uh, do the same. Now the fun bit here is we can tile this larger one with four smaller ones. Hmm. So we can fit four of the smaller shapes inside the larger one. So that's the first mathematical challenge. Do you think you can figure that one out? I think I can figure this one out. I think I can. So I try it then. Yes, please. Okay. So I think, I mean, I, yeah, I think I've got it. Okay, shall I show the camera my, my solution? Oh, yeah, lovely. That's a good one. Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. So, um, so we kind of have, you know, one in the middle there and then we've got three round the edge. Okay, so this piece, this piece of maths art that we're going, to, we're going to do today is based entirely on this kind of, of um, tiling. So what actually happens is that we can tile any enlargement, any integer sized enlargement of this L with the original L shape. We call this a reptile so we can repeat and tile larger versions of itself and there's plenty of shapes that can do that but this is one of my faves. So to create the, um, the design I'm going to start on a new piece of paper because I'm going to start right up in the corner so we can see how big we can get and um, I start with one L so here's my one L here. Okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that double sized L that we just practiced next to it well so in, in round the edge of it so here I've got my double sized L and I'm going to divide that up into the small L shapes
Yeah, I've done that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to just continue doing this across the whole page. So what we're going to do is we're going to double the size of our L again and draw another one. So last time it was, um, we had double size. So double again gives us, so we're going to draw four across here and then four, four, and then four down here and all the way back up to here. So this one is four times the size and we've got to fit 16 small L's into this larger size. Any thoughts on how you might approach that? Yeah, so we had originally, we, I put one of the small L's into that corner. Uh, so I'm just going to put one of those double sized into the corner of this four by four size one. I think one. I know what you mean. Do you, do you see what I mean? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Show me and let me know. Okay, so let me try this. I want this size here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I break it up like I did before, but I've enlarged everything. Yeah, nice. I like it. So you drew this one in here. And you say you're going to break up this one the same as you did the previous one. Okay. And then what about all that, that blank space around the outside? So I'm going to uh, fill those in uh, with my Ooh, what medium-sized yes. triominoes, and then break those up into the uh, the small triominoes. Sometimes it's reflected, sometimes it's upside down. Yeah, you kind of have this repeating piece that slots together. Now you've done that, we're going to do the same again. So we're going to double the size of our L again. So my last one was four across the top. So now I've got to make sure it goes eight across the top. Yeah. So do you think you can fill that with the small Ls? I think I can. So I think I can see what the pattern is. Yeah, so basically this is the concept, this is the structure of all the future designs we're gonna we're gonna do with this. So yeah, so we fill it up with the L's the size down, and then we fill those up with the ones smaller, and then we fill those ones up with even smaller ones until we get down to our original size. So I like this as a as a doodle. So just kind of you know have a little doodle, have a little play, explore. This is very relaxing. It's nice, isn't it? I go out, to, oh, you beat me. <laughs> it's not a race. Oh yeah, that looks great. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so depending on how big your piece of paper is, you could even go a size up. So here's one I did earlier, um, which uh, is even bigger, it fills up my whole piece of paper. Um, you have to might have to do some calculations to try and figure out like what size paper to have to make sure that you fit it all in. Um, but I really like this. It's a really, you know, it's straightforward concept, but you can get these, this really interesting kind of almost fractal-like pattern. Um, and then, you know, once, you've, once you're happy with the pattern, there are different ways of, um, of moving forward with it. So for example, um, I quite had some, um, I had quite a lot of fun uh, coloring in uh, different patterns. So here we go, we're back to the, the slightly smaller size, but um, I chose to, highlight different aspects of the structure um, within these different um, these different colorings. This coloring on the left here, I, um, I managed to find a coloring such that you only needed three colors to color it and none of the colors touched themselves. And then over here, um, I was highlighting something different about the structure that I noticed, these kind of like um, branching patterns uh, that I quite liked. If you like the doodling and you want some more decorative pieces, with this one here, um, on the left, I've got kind of a more florally pattern and then on the right a kind of more geometric version so with this one all I did was I came up with a simple a simple motif and then repeated it in every single L of my design um, to create these kind of really neat repeating tessellating patterns um, and then the last thing I wanted to show you was another um, was another coloring version and uh, in this one I stuck to uh, just the L shape so it's not the full design um, but here we can see that you don't have to make every single L 
the smallest L possible. You can randomly leave some as large ones. So I had some fun exploring colouring in of those. Um, and uh, yeah, so those were some different ideas that I thought you could use to take that design forward. Thanks, Becky. And I hope people at home enjoyed that. And I hope you will try out this mathematical design for yourself. This is how mine turned out. Uh, I tried to keep it classy with two colours. Uh, you might be able to do a better job of it than I did or use more colours and find different patterns in that mathematical design. And once you're finished experimenting with the L-shaped tile, Maybe try some other tiling, some other mathematical designs and see what you learn. They're called reptiles, uh, so we'll put some links for that kind of thing in the description. So I'll be really interested to see what you come up with. Uh, stay curious and I'll see you next time.